My biggest fear has always been driving the big tractor. tractor I actually overcome my fears of driving the tractor so now I'm official country girl I have a I can officially say that I'm a farmer and I can put out my own hay and take care of my own animals now that is official now I want to update you on my rescue um, I got him in the in his little rescue unit yesterday. He did fine. He ate well. He's playing with the others, uh, like through the fence, which is a good thing. And this morning he slept well. He was seemed to be in a good mood this morning. And the first thing he was wanting to do is eat. So here he is. So many times uh, over the past year that I've had the rescue, um, I have learned, I've learned a lot and I've learned there's so many different types of rescues because some are like an injury and the, and the family or place can't take care of them. They don't have the um, equipment or the, the, the means to take care of them. And then there's sometimes you rescue and it's like, my kids won't play with the animal anymore. Will you take it? There's, there's all different kinds of situations that you're in when you're a rescue. And it takes so much to be a rescue. And although my main focus of my farm is not rescue, it's just kind of developed and happened. It's like when you become a farmer, and you have animals, people call you all the time. Do you want a pig? Hey, do you, there's this dog. Do you want this dog? They constantly call you wanting to take animals in. And I have to say, if I had the means and the area and the land and the income to rescue full time, 
I know I would. So right now I'm in the farm area and this afternoon I have a tour at two o'clock. I have several big groups coming. So I'm gonna go out here and check on the animals by myself and just make sure that everyone's okay and has plenty of water and that everyone uh, feels good and, and all those things that come along with having a farm. Hey, are you sleeping? Huh? Are you sleeping? Hey, hey baby, are you sleeping? You want your belly rubbed? You want your belly, oh, you roll over to get that belly rubbed. Yes, you do. watching out for my my female because you know she's pregnant and I noticed that I think some milk might be coming in but I'm gonna go check okay, here she is thought she was like eight months pregnant so maybe another month month and a half and Dexter's gonna be a daddy <laughs> hey tater bug hey hey tater bug give me a kiss he's looking at the camera give me a kiss come on come on tater bug <laughs> not today like everybody on this side has plenty of water and hay so they get a thumbs up so let's go check on the other ones I'm sitting here waiting on the several families to pull up to tour today at two o'clock and it's so much fun when families come. I used to do individual tours for individual families and I found it so much more successful doing a group at a time like different families because the kids end up becoming friends and it's really wonderful. So the first thing that I do is I begin to read my children's book about how my farm got started. And at that point is when I educate them about how my animals live in harmony on my farm. So from there, usually we go over rules and then we go into the farm and we begin to look at the animals and how they all live together. And um, the kids usually take pictures and they're usually amazed that they can actually pet the animals like and not through a fence. So Rigger and I go on rides every afternoon. He loves to ride the golf cart. <laughs> Rigger! Rigger! So I just got finished with my tour. So right now I'm walking to the creek. Can you hear it roaring? 
it rained so bad last night. It was storming like crazy. So I want to come down here and see what the creek looks like. It's a little wonderland down here. The water is really just ripping. Look at this. So gorgeous. You know, it's like when I come down here, it's like a totally different world versus up at the top of the hill where all the farm animals live. And it's just, it's just really peaceful down here. And this is what sold me on the property. I came down here and immediately decided that this was the house I needed. So I strive really hard to take care of myself. And it seems like I go 90 to nothing a lot. And I do, I do. I like being wide open, but I also know that it's very important to take care of my health and to slow down. And not just for my physical health, but for my mental health, to be able to just get in the moment and just look around all around me and look at the different colors that are around me, the different sounds that are around me, and just really get in the moment to get thankful. So I usually do that down here at the creek. I love coming down here by myself and just exploring to look for new footprints and to just hear the crunching of the leaves, just the simple stuff in life. I'm standing in the middle of the creek right now with my boots on. So I want to talk to you about something. The reason I'm such a sucker about health and taking care of yourself. My, both of my parents have passed away. My mom passed away in her 60s and so did my dad. And a lot of it was neglect of health. Uh, my mother had a brainstem stroke. Uh, at the age of 52 and was bedridden her adult life. That happened to me when I was a teenager. So my mom was sick my entire life. She had diabetes and high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and neglected to take care of her health. And it really affected me as a kid. I was really young in high school and my mom was in the hospital fighting for her life from a stroke and it was very difficult as a teenager to live with that. And I know what I went through as a teenager and the last thing that I want to do is put my kids through that. So I really exercise and take care of myself. I try to eat right and I take care of myself, not just physically, but mentally as well. So I often come down here as a little getaway. I can't wait to build a cabin down here and really have a getaway where I can just get away from everything and just live outdoors and listen to nature and see the beautiful creek that's in my backyard really means a lot to me. I often come down here to do a lot of goal setting for me and my farm and my family. Um, I'm always striving to better myself. Um, I feel like I am a very good version of Judy, but I don't think I'm at my best by no means. I constantly try to strive to be the best version of Judy that I can be. But right now, I'm on a trail and I'm taking you to my favorite spot on my entire property. And it's just a little simple spot, but it's absolutely beautiful and I'm dying to show you. Isn't it just beautiful? So, construction is starting. We are taking down all these pine trees to begin to build my husband's shop. And I'm taking over this for my education center. And I'm super excited, but 
all that wood right there is going towards a cabin that's going to be down at the creek area. So in the next couple of months, we're going to have a lot of construction going on. And all this wood over here is going to be sawed and put together for the building that's going to go right there. Super excited. I thank you for subscribing to my channel and coming to my channel today to watch this video. I pray that it will always be a safe place for you to come. And I pray that you'll have joy and happiness when you watch each and every video. Thank you for subscribing.